hard. I think they've had a good camp. Um, they're learning the scheme. I think they're gaining confidence, which to me is the most important thing. I want those guys to play confident. I want them to have fun. Because um, on game day, we got to go play. And I think they're getting close. Uh, the confidence is definitely growing. Are you two deep, three deep? I mean, you, you have the four you want. I mean, I think it's a pretty deep room. I told the guys today, and I'll be honest with you, ex exactly what I told them today is we got about a week and a half until we play. So I want everybody to prove to me that they, they have earned the right to go into the rotation. Okay. And if they do, I'll play them. And that's, that's the truth. That's exactly what I said in the meeting today. Sure. We've heard a lot about your guys forcing turnovers. What has been the key to their success in that? I think uh, kind of what I just went, to, went, went back to saying is they know what they're doing. Um, they're playing with good fundamentals, good technique, and then they're confident. And they're, they're finishing, and they're finishing violent. And they're not afraid to go try to make a play. That's what practice is for. That's what I tried to talk to them about in the spring, if you remember. And, and it's fun to see them doing that. And if they make a mistake, we'll fix it. But I want them to, I want them to be fearless. And, and, and I want that to be their mindset. And when you do that, hopefully good things will happen. Do you think some of those turnovers can translate in games? Do I think? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I, I really hope so. You know, I mean, I, I, when I think of turnovers, guys, to me, it's, it's everybody, right? It's, it's ball disruption by the D-line. It's the linebackers getting in windows. It's tip balls. And then a lot of the times, it's we end up catching them, and we get the credit for it as the DBs, but it's the whole defense. So the guy's been doing a good job. Jeff, you've seen two weeks of Jeff Okuda on the field every day. What makes him so special? I think his work ethic. I think you know he's an exceptional athlete. He's got size, length, speed. Um, he's got great feet. He loves football, and he practices hard every single day. So what separates him from you know, other people is his mindset. And that's what the great ones have. And that's, that's what he does. He works. You, you've uh, seen a lot of NFL quarterbacks before. He's projected first round pick. Do you see that already? Uh, here's what I tell Jeff, right? It, it's one day at a time. Like, projections don't mean anything. He's got to go out and prove it every single day at practice, which is very important. And then he's got to go play this year, you know? And, and I don't want there to be a distraction because he can't think like that. He's just got to go play ball. And, I, and I'm, like I said, I'm being honest with you, that's, that's how I talk to him. Like, forget all that, man. Let's go practice today, and then let's go practice tomorrow. And then on Saturday, let's go. Go play and have fun and be fearless. Do you so, find, I'm sorry, do you find that because of this place that there's a preoccupation with, I get here, put in a little time, boom, I'm ready to go the next. How, how do you uh, enjoy the moment for them? How do they enjoy I, the moment? I, I try to teach them what it's like there, right? And how fun and great it is to be here right now with your teammates that you've been with at your school. And, and for some, this is going to be the most fun they ever have playing football. And they need to embrace that. There's going to be plenty other time down the road if they're fortunate enough to play in the NFL. But for now, and this group's close. They've done an unbelievable job here, getting the right people, gelling this thing together. There's nothing like that. Because, you know, in the NFL, it's... Every time you look around, the roster is different. This is the only time in their lives where they'll have a group of people that they can really do this together with, and they have to embrace that. So the guys we got to talk to you say they're, they're all fired up about what you brought yeah. to the. Do you sense that in them too that they're paying attention? I mean, how, oh, yeah. how does it they're, show up? I guess? They're, they're paying attention, and, and if you've seen practice, I'm not easy on them. I mean, I get after those guys. I mean, it's a hard position to play. I want them to be great. They want to be great. And, and they bought in, you know, and, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And Jeff, Go ahead. No, 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 if, you, if you were going to start a game tomorrow, who would be your, and you're in your Sam look, or, you know, fourth or eight, who would be the two safeties? Uh, well, ask me that the, Ask me that next week, and I'll give you well, what I'm getting to here, where, where does Brendan White fit into the base defense as opposed to the bullet? I mean, again, I think what personnel are they in? Who do they have on the field? How athletic is the tight end? Who's the slot receiver? Who's the quarterback? There's a lot that goes into that. And, I, and I, by no means am I avoiding your question, but yeah. the guy who starts on the first play might not be in the second play. You, you know what I mean? And who do they send in? So there's a lot that goes into that. That's why I really, I really don't know yet. I don't know what they're going to do on their first play, so I can't tell you what personnel group will be in the first play. So I think they're both starters. Yeah. You know, and that's the that's the truth. And I'm not saying that's so they read it. No, that's the truth. Um, they've earned the right to do that. And just like Wint has done the same thing. You know what I mean?
Yeah, I was going to say Sean Wade. How does how does this all figure out for Sean Wade? Yeah. Sean plays a different position than those guys. Right, right, but he's he was in the slot on a lot of guys last year. We saw. Sure. Is that still kind of like well, a? I think you, I think you'll see Sean inside. I think you'll see, you'll see Sean outside. It depends who's who's their slot. Who's more suited to cover the slot? Who's more suited to cover the big receiver on the edge? So. Again, it's like again, I, like I promise you, I'm being completely honest with you. It's who are we playing? Who do they have? What's our best matchup? Let's put our guys in the best position to win with those matchups, and then let's go play. And then we have guys that can rotate in. You know, we got we got talent. Jeff, you, when you name all those guys, and you talk, you're just getting there, I think, with the rotating in. Josh Proctor's name has come up maybe more than anybody. He had a couple picks a few weeks ago. Right. The limited amount we get to hear about, that's a big deal. How does where does he fit in? To this plan, how much can he help this season? He's starting to be consistent, and that's the one thing. If, if, if you look at the way Josh has practiced, you guys saw Josh came out and it was like interception, interception, right? And then I think he started to press a little bit, and I told him this, and I think he was trying to make plays. Well, you just got to let plays come to you in this scheme, and I think he's getting back to that. We just talked to him about being consistent, and if he's consistent, we'll, we'll find a role for him and we'll get him in. When, when you have that much, with that much to work with a corner at safety, the bullet and Sam. Is there any defense that you got? If you just decided to make up a scheme tomorrow, could you? I mean, can you do whatever? You oh want? yeah, we got them in now. Definitely. <laughs> it's all plug and play. You might see seven DBs on the field one day. The linebacker guys might not be happy, but <laughs> if they have, what if they got five wides on the field, right? We better get some DBs on the field, you know. So, yeah, we have those packages. How, how much fun is that for you to go to work and scheme up? Urban used to say, draw on a whiteboard and get out the ideas. When you have this much talent, you can do whatever you want. How much fun is that as a coach? I just love coaching in general. I mean, just being out here every day, it's been unbelievable. This is probably the most fun I've had coaching in a long time. And it's because of how hard they work and how hard they practice. But truthfully, it's we want our guys to play fast and we want them to know what they're doing. So sometimes, like, I'll say to one of the assistants, like, Hey, did I go over their head a little? Like, I don't want to do that. I want I want these guys to know what they're doing so they can line up and play. So sometimes I have to check myself too and say, whoa, slow down, right? Like, today in my meeting, I looked over and said, hey, did I give them too much information? Like, I'm learning too, and I have to learn the guys, And but I'm having fun. Hey, Jeff, I know this is a little bit different from the NFL, but you've been quite the closer on the recruiting trail. I was wondering, now that we're in August, did you think when you took this job that you guys would be this this close to being finished with your class at this point in the year? I don't I mean like yeah, like ninety percent of it all that, filled up already. To be honest with you, I had no clue what to expect when I came back recruiting. So I didn't really have much expectation. I knew I had a job to do and then with the support people we had and recruiting for this place, I just went out and tried as the best that I could and you know, hopefully some good things continue to happen. And as you've been learning on the job about what does having this much already done in the recruiting class do for a coach? When you're in August, you have three months till December, yeah. and you have like three or four maybe spots left to fill. Yeah, from that aspect, it's nice, right? Because now we know exactly who who the guys are we need to communicate with, need to stay in touch with, which families we're really. So you can really become close with those guys because you're not spread so thin. You know, I'm not reaching here and reaching here. It's kind of I got this group of guys and. Let's go, and then when that's done, let's go coach football. Does it allow you to go get luxury-type guys that aren't really necessarily filling a need? You've got your needs basically all addressed. Can you spend three months trying to get guys maybe in other states that you would have had a harder time to get, you know, or in other situations? Does that make sense? It does. I, I'm probably still figuring that out, too. You know, I'm right. just, just doing everything as hard as I can and <clears throat> whatever they tell me to do. and. Hopefully things work out well. All right, I'll get you next August on that some, stuff. Yeah. Some speculation. Yeah, give me some time to figure that out. Does having, does having a deep wide receiver room, a talented wide receiver room, make your job, I guess for lack of a better term, easier? Do you get to kind of use that? I don't I don't know if it makes my job easier. I think iron sharpens iron, and I think Coach Hartline is one of the best receiver coaches in the whole entire world. I know he'll laugh when I say that, but I do mean that. Um, so that combination with the skill they have makes our guys better. It's hard. Every rep is hard, which is what it's going to be like in a game, you know? So I think that's really cool that we get to do that. Some reports out there that uh, Jonathan Cooper uh, wasn't at practice and maybe dealing with some injury issues. We haven't talked to Coach Day, obviously, today. Just is there anything to what's going on? Is it a lingering thing or hoping to get him back sometime soon? Ask Coach Day about that. I think mm -hmm. he'll give you the best answer. I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth, so just 
if you don't mind, just ask Coach that. Okay. And again, no disrespect. He'll just do a better job answering that. Jeff, when you're talking about putting guys in the right position, and you want Sean Wade being able to bounce between stuff, like what what is the best position for him? Where where is he at his best? That's a good question. Um, Sean's a really smart football player, and he's really instinctive. So when he plays inside, he's he sees things well. So he's good against the run, he's good against the pass, and things move faster in there, right? And he can react quickly mentally and physically, which is awesome. So from that aspect, I think he's a good player inside. I also think he has a side length, size, length, and speed to play on the outside too. So, you know, I, I think he's a really good combination, and I know I'm not giving you, I'm kind of riding the fence a little, but I think he's good at both, and I think he'll continue to develop at both. Can you guys put out a depth chart? <clears throat> what position will be next to Sean's name? That is a good question. They haven't asked me that yet. It just seems like he's playing strong safety, he's playing nickel corner, he's playing outside. Like, That's kind of cool that we can you guys can't figure that out. That means <laughs> FAU won't figure it out either, right? Yeah, I guess you're right? So let's see when the depth chart comes out what it is. That, that's funny though. So he could honestly, you could put nickel, you could put corner, you could put safety, because it might look like all those things, right? Sometimes you see him there, sometimes you see him there, sometimes you see him there. So kind of like all of the above, which they'll probably just list him as a corner, I guess, right? Yeah. How many other? Do you have any other guys like that? I don't know, like Jordan's talked about wanting to move around. I don't know. How yeah, I mean, all the guys that train on the inside have to be able to play on the outside. I mean, we don't just have the luxury of just saying, hey, you're an inside-only guy. So those guys can all do that. Jeff, when you come in, like, there was a the coach before you coached a lot of press man, and that is yeah. what the guys here were recruited to do. But when you come in, that's, that's not your staple. You're not going to play that every single down. Oh, I love press man. Like, if, if you wanted to sit down and talk, that'd probably be, I could talk to you about three hours about that. Love press man. Got to be able to play press man. Have to be able to. I think it's a fundamental technique that's kind of lost in football right now, and it's hard, and you got to work it. You know, so you'll see us press. I just don't think it will be on every single play we won't press. But how do you, how do you get them to buy in? How do you get cornerbacks to buy in who came who came to play that system that they were recruited? Because they saw guys get go to the NFL with sure. that system. Sure. And it's a great system. I mean, look, like the the guys that have coached here before did an unbelievable job. So I'm not like saying like no, we're cha no, that's not what we said at all. We're just, you know, in our scheme, we need to be able to play some off. We need to be able to press. And what do I do? I show them. I show them it working. I show them why. If you show somebody why and you put on tape and you show them that, I mean, I don't think the buy-in's hard. These guys trust us, which is awesome. I mean, our, whole, our defensive staff has done a great job with that, and it's been fun. But these guys have been awesome. Yeah, I have a blast. It's been great. These, the guys that we get a chance to recruit and talk to, it's been a lot of fun. But you've had a lot of success in the Green Trail and you hadn't done it for so long. Is it just like something where you just go in people's houses and just have a conversation and hang out? And, you know, do you find that like fun compared to like maybe another coach who's been doing it for years? I, I don't know because I did it for years, right? I did it for 10 years. Um, I just kind of got right back into it. And you just be yourself. Just be honest and... Keep it real and show them what you can do for them. Show what the university can do for them. And don't lie to them and don't sell them on things that aren't true. And at the end of the day, if they want to come here, let's go. And if they don't, then, hey, I, you know, I'll go somewhere else. No, I didn't need a break. I had a lot of fun doing it back then, too, you know. So it's, it's been good. Oh, sorry. Jeff, how many um, corners do you have? Right now, do you feel comfortable you can play on a Saturday? I guess maybe outside of, I think Jeff Damon and Sean are probably. As long as they keep working hard, I feel comfortable okay. with all of them. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't want to single anybody out and not mention a name. And, you know, those guys are working too hard to, for me to go down that road. So sorry not to give no, you no, what you're okay. looking for. Because you, when you first got here, like the very first time you talked to us, you were asked about rotating corners, and you basically said, like, if you have enough, we'll do it. Yeah. I just didn't know if you felt like No, that. and that's like, kind of like what I said before, right? Yeah. Like, go out and practice. Go out and show me every single day you deserve to play, and we'll play you. Yeah. You know, and that's the truth. And maybe week three, someone else will show up, right? Because these guys have to still develop. They're all still young. It's college football. So, and they got to realize that. Like, hey, just because you don't play week one, it's a long season. You got a long way to go. You know? Do you have a better sense on how many guys you'll be able to rotate? Nah, not yet. Hopefully, as we get closer to game time, I'll have a good answer for you about that.
We hear a lot from the guys. Uh, Last question. This defense is simpler than it may have been in the past. And you hear that around the country. A new defensive staff comes in. They simplify things. Right. Why don't coaches just play simple all the time then? If that seems to be the, the answer when, when new coaches come in all the time. Truthfully, I don't think you can always be simple. Okay. You know? Who do you have? What do you have? You know? Um, who are you playing against? What conference are you in? I think it's all kind of, where are you? What type of players do you have? What type of offensive schemes are you playing against? There might be some games where we have to be less simple. There might be some games where we're more simple. So that's a good question. But as I watch a lot of the film and I see what other schools are doing, yeah, there's some, I see why some, some, some places aren't simple. But our philosophy, Coach Madison and myself, we're just, we want guys to know what they're doing, play as hard and as fast as they can. And at the end of the day, if, if we get beat on something, then, hey, they beat us. Good throw, good catch, next play. And that's kind of like, that's kind of what we're going for. So simple maybe just a starting point as opposed to where it ends up? Yeah, I think simple, but I hope when we say simple, it's not like we line up and you guys are like, <laughs> wow, these guys are really simple. Like simple for the players, right? Sure. It's our job to make what we teach them simple, but hopefully we're still pretty complex. Right. You know, I don't want to say that we're like real, you know what I mean? I got you. Hey, Jeff, um, Damon talked on, on the first day of camp about he was basically gone. He had, he had decided he was going to leave after last season. And he had conversations with a lot of people, and one of those was with you. He said it was like in the hallway outside. You guys were having a meeting. Yeah, we met in my office. You, you couldn't have been here that long. I guess only like, It was my first day, I think. How? And I know those conversations are private, so I don't expect you to divulge what you told him. But yeah. how, how were you in a position, I guess, to have that kind of conversation with him when you didn't really know each other, if you get what I'm saying? Like, it just seems like it's, it's impressive that it hit him so hard coming from a guy that he didn't really know. It goes back to I told him the truth. I told him what we could do for him. I told him what I think he needed. I told him I watched his tape. I told him what I thought he could work on. I told him that I'd have his back if he did everything, and I was honest with him. And that's it. I didn't sell him anything. I didn't promise him anything. I just told him the truth. And then he made the decision to come back. And I'm glad he did. How's this camp been so far? He's done a nice job. Guy loves football. Guy works hard. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Jeff. All right, guys.